I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandagia, 745, and we've got an update for you on our pending severe weather threat heading through the remainder of this evening and probably through the first portion of the overnight as well. Currently, there are no warnings out for most of Southeast Texas, but there are some watches, and that's for our northern cities and counties. A severe thunderstorm watch until 10 o'clock this evening for Grimes, Walker. We've got portions of San Jacinto as well as Polk. But I do expect our threat for strong to severe storms to persist after 10 o'clock, which is why I'm suspicious that there will likely be some more counties and cities added to this over the next hour or so as the whole system evolves. Our main threats is a severe thunderstorm watch, so tornadoes are a threat, but they are lowest on the list tonight. It's really gusty winds in excess of 70 miles per hour. On top of that, some of these cells have already had a history of producing well to the north of some large hail. So that could certainly be a possibility that will start to diminish, though, as the sun goes down. But the wind threat stays with us. Also, they're rather slow moving at the moment, so some street flooding can't be ruled out either, and especially in those vulnerable areas in and around the downtown area of Houston. All right, here's a look at radar. So when we last talked about an hour and a half ago, a lot of these storms were just north of our area. Now they're beginning to push into areas like Walker and over into Polk as well. In fact, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning for the far northeastern corner corner of Walker County, and this is up for about another half an hour or so because it is so slow moving. It's pretty much right over Trinity, Trinity County right now, just to the west of Groveton. And I want to show you here, look at how many lightning strikes there are with this one cell. This is a 10 minute tally, and that count is now up to 918 strikes. OK, positive and negative strikes when there's that ratio and there's a more positive ratio here. That means those lightning strikes are originating from the top of the thunderstorm cloud, meaning the system is just a little bit on the stronger side out there too. hail signature. We had one earlier that was just to the west of Friday, still a minor one over by Glendale right around uh, Highway 94. But that's indicating maybe marble or nickel sized hail. But at one point I did see it up to golf ball size. So keep that in mind. These have had a history of producing hail as well as the gusty winds. And as you saw, very, very frequent lightning and heavy rainfall. We've got another cell, although non severe. Actually, it looks like they just put that out. So you're a thunderstorm warning here for this area out by Livingston. So it's San Jacinto and over in a Polk. Here's Lake Livingston here. So most of the action right now is nestled off to the east of 59. And then that other cell up in Walker County off to the north and west there. And we've got a lot of lightning here too out by Chester and to the west and to the east, excuse me, of 59 at the moment. Hail signatures on all these. We've got one here south of Trinity that I just showed you. And then more hail signatures off to the west of or to the east of Polk County too. Now, well northwest, we've got another cluster here of severe thunderstorms along I-35 south of Waco. These are moving in our direction, so this is what we're going to keep our eyes on over the next couple of hours as we approach sunset, heading towards northwestern portions of Grimes, probably in the next hour to 90 minutes. Here's how things play out on our future track modeling, initializing quite well. So this is the computer model taking a snapshot of the current conditions, ingesting it into the computer models and spitting this out, which is pretty much right in line with what we're seeing on radar. Let's play it out in time here, going up through 9 o'clock. Here's a line of storms, likely still severe in nature, with gusty winds being the main threat, dropping into the northern portions of Harris County by 9 o'clock, up into Montgomery County, places like San Jacinto, Central and Northern Liberty County, and then it drops to the I-10 corridor, but at this point in time, we're approaching 10, 11 o'clock at night. So well after the sun goes down, we're losing that storm fuel. It's driven by the daytime heating. Once we turn off the burners, the pot stops boiling quite quickly. So that's what we're seeing here. The storms will start to dissipate as they reach the coastline. Still some thunder and lightning likely, but the severity of them will be much less. And all is said and done. I think 1, 2 a.m., all the storms are gone, and certainly by sunrise, everything is clear out of here. Temperature-wise, we're approaching 8 o'clock in the evening, and look how warm it is still out there. Upper 80s to around 90. Factor in dew points, we've got heat index values that are still in the mid to upper 90s. So there's plenty of fuel available at the moment, but again, once the sun goes down, that will really start to dissipate and diminish. So our storm threat is with us, severe threat for the next several hours. Keep it here. Any other warnings will pop on air for you. And as the line approaches Harris County, we'll be on the TV side uh, come 10 o'clock.